Hey everybody, Steve here, and today in this video we're going to talk about God and His Word um, because there's still a lot of people who are hanging on to denominational teachings. Uh, perhaps they went to Bible college, seminary, uh, they've been pastors for years and years and years, but yet we're still getting erroneous information in regards uh, to God and His Word. And maybe that's the reason why God put in the New Testament in the Scripture saying, you know, test everything. Test the spirits, test the message. Uh, Paul even said, if someone brings you a message different than what we have preached, he said, even if Paul brought a, me a message that was different to have nothing to do with him, that person would be accursed. And so it is really important that we have good doctrine, that we have good practices and behaviors in our lives, that we live according to what Scripture shows us. Unfortunately, though, as believers today who are saved by grace, uh, we have faith, we've repented, we've confessed of our sin, did that First John 1, 9 thing, and that uh, some people have taken the, the, the belief of saying that, you know what, well, once saved, always saved, then I'm, I, I don't have to obey anything anymore. Because his, he, he, uh, Jesus did, you know, he died on the cross, he the finished work, uh, you know, he fulfilled the law. I am under no obligation to obey the law or the commandments from here on out. Um, that would be great. I would really love that. But unfortunately, there's a lot of other scriptures that we see that show that that's not the case. As we become a new creature in Christ, there is an aspect of obedience in our walk with God. As a matter of fact, we see that those who continue in sin are, are cast out. And Paul, you know, ran across those. Uh, you see the immoral brethren that, uh, you know, wouldn't confess, wouldn't repent. They continued in sin and so that they were cast out. And, and he told them, have nothing to do with these people. Uh, and have nothing to do with the false teachers that would say, hey, uh, there is no more law, being lawless, as if, uh, live your life as if there was no law given. And it's interesting because a lot of people will say, you know, well, the law kills, but uh, grace is freedom. Well, the law kills if you're a sinner, because sin, when it's full grown, gives birth to death. Now, when we're a believer and we've repented and confessed of our sin, then guess what? We're saved by grace, and so now we are free from that law of sin and death if we're obedient to it. Again, I've given the example so many times that um, as a believer, saved by grace, that walking in faith, living according to the Spirit, you know, love, joy, the fruits of the Spirit, and love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, kindness, self-control, the whole thing, that with that, if I'm obedient to the law, let's take adultery. If I do not commit adultery on both levels, physically, and I don't look at, at somebody and say, wow, I'd really like to have, uh, have relations with her, uh, that is committing adultery as well. Yeshua talked about that. But if I don't commit that adultery, and either physically or mentally, by, by looking and lusting in my heart, and breaking a number of other commandments, coveting after my, my neighbor's wife and his stuff, then I am free from the consequences of disobeying and breaking that law. So hence, by the grace and the faith and what Yeshua did on the cross, I am able to walk in obedience and not be entangled in that sin. There is no more penalty or punishment because I have been obedient to the law. And Yeshua talked about that. He said, go and sin no more. We see a lot of writings in the New Testament where it says, you know, that uh, are we supposed to continue, uh, continue sinning? No, we're not. <laughs> Forbid it. Uh, but there are still people that say, you know, well, uh, you know, this whole thing, you know, obedient to the commandments is, is just wrong. That's legalism. Well, show me anywhere in Scripture where not committing adultery, either physically or, or lusting in my heart, and looking with my eyes, if I don't commit that sin, break that law, how is that wrong? No one's been able to do that yet. And the thing is, a lot of people will bring up things just as I did, been there and done that. I would use those out-of-context scriptures, uh, such as if you break one point of the law, it's like you've broken them all. I would use that as an excuse to not be obedient, to not let God take that wicked flesh that is in me, that, that sanctification process, that examining myself to see if I'm in the faith, 
to die to that self, as Scripture says in the New Testament, to become mature in the Lord. Because there was things that I didn't really want to give up. And so I used that one point. If you break one point of the law, it's like you've broken the law. So there's no sense in, in even trying anymore. You know, if it's too hard, it's too hard. I'm saved by grace. God will have grace on me because I can't, you know, I can't do that. I don't want to do that. But that's not what the rest of Scripture says. We're supposed to walk as he walked. And the thing is, is that maybe perhaps that is how we examine ourselves to see if we're in the faith. If we get to a point in our lives where we say, you know, uh, I had an individual tell me that, you know, you that part where Yeshua talked about hate your brother in your heart, no one can keep that, that law. Well, I don't have a problem with my brothers. I don't hate them in my heart. And I know lots of people that don't have that problem. I used to. But it's because I didn't want to give up that hate, that bitterness. I didn't want to give it over to God. I wanted to be in control. And so, in light of that, that's when I try to use those scriptures out of context. But actually, what I was doing, it was evidence of the word coming against me and examining and showing how short I fall from God. And that how I need to repent of that and return to him. And ask for his forgiveness. And when God works in your life and brings up things in your life through his word by studying like the Bereans and searching the scriptures, being like King David, you know, I hide your word in my heart that I might not sin against thee, O Lord. And, you know, it all comes out. And then you truly can walk in obedience. But the thing is, do you want to? I don't know. There's some other things I don't want to talk about here. This is going to be a long video, so that's why I got some coffee. But there's a lot of people who apparently say that, you know, we're not supposed to obey the commandments of God. That's old Jewish stuff. And we've talked about how it's not a Jewish thing. It's a God thing. Um, anybody who follows God has walks as, as Yeshua walked. And... Yet there are still people that say, you know, well, the law, is a, the law is sin and death. Well, yeah, if you're a sinner and you continue in sin, there is sin and death. But if you're obedient to the law, then guess what? I don't have to worry uh, if I commit adultery. I don't have to worry if I commit adultery, there's going to be repercussions. There's going to be sexually transmitted diseases. I'm sinning against my spouse, against other people. Uh, I'm sinning against God. I'm dishonoring my parents. I, I'm coveting the, my neighbor's stuff and his wife. There's so many laws that I'm breaking, uh, it's just bad business. But again, if I'm obedient to that law through grace, being saved by grace, and through faith and walking in the Spirit, then that Spirit and the law that is written on our hearts allows me to walk as Yeshua walked, and I don't have to be engaged in that sin. So I am free from the penalty or the, the cause and effect things that happen with committing adultery. I don't have to worry about seeing a doctor and getting a shot for an STD. I don't have to worry about lying and cheating and stealing. And, you know, I'm free from that. I'm free. There's liberty. And Paul talks about the, the liberty of the law, the law of liberty, the law of righteousness. Uh, so there's so many aspects uh, in different facets to God's word and his law, his instructions, his commandments that I think, and I know myself, I ended up picking one facet, running with it, and not looking at the whole of Scripture. Um, but with that, there's so many people out there who think that um, there's just, you know, there, I, I'm just picking one or two Scriptures out of context in regards to God and His commandments. Um, but I want to go over some things. Uh, the first one I want to talk about is Matthew 19:17. This is Yeshua. He said, you know, where the guy comes up to him and says, you know, good master, what must, must I do to have eternal life? And he said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good but one, that is God. But if you want to enter life, keep the commandments. Isn't it interesting that Yeshua kept the commandments and we were supposed to walk as he walked? Paul even said that, you know, follow me as I follow Christ. And the thing is, is that, yeah, we can't be perfect as he is, but that lack of perfection 
actually forces us to continue in prayer, to continue seeking Him and having that relationship with Him. It forces us to go to Him, to deal with those wicked things that are in our heart, to turn them over to Him. Uh, another thing at uh, Matthew 5, 16 through 20, it says, Let your light shine before men. Don't put it under a bushel and see your good that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. And then he says, Do not think I came to destroy the law or the prophets. Okay, so there it is. Yeshua is stating that he didn't come to destroy the law. I did not come to, to destroy, but to fulfill. And the word fulfill actually means to make a foundation, to stand firm in. In other words, a pattern of behavior, the basis of your life, is not to destroy the law. For surely I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle will by no means pass from the law till all is fulfilled. So in other words, the law is still binding. Uh, it, we can still use the law lawfully to walk a walk that keeps us from sin. Whoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches men so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does and teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say to you that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. So people will, will say, you know, well, there's no benefit uh, to following the law or living the law, the instructions of life that God gave for our benefit and our blessing. But yet Yeshua says that uh, there is. If you teach people to break the least of the commandments, you're going to be least in the kingdom of heaven. But if you teach the commandments with life in the spirit, to walk as he walked, so that you're free from sin and the wickedness that's in this world, then you're going to be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Another interesting thing, it says that your righteousness must exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees. Another point where Yeshua talked about the Pharisees, he told his disciples, he told them and said, whatever they teach, you do. Well, what were they teaching? What were the, the Pharisees teaching? They were teaching the Old Testament. They were teaching the laws, the instructions, the principles, the precepts that God had given them in the beginning so that they might have life. The problem that Jesus had with the scribes and the Pharisees is that their heart was wicked. They were like whitewashed tombs full of dead men's bones. So they were talking, but their life, their pattern of behavior was against the law. They were being disobedient. Another thing we want to look at is John chapter 14, verse 15. Yeshua, he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. He and the Father are one. The word became flesh and came down and dwelt among us. The law is also included in the word. You love me, keep my commandments. And he doesn't, and Yeshua even, even taught in another place in the Gospels where he said, you know, I teach, basically, uh, paraphrasing, I'm teaching what my Father puts forth. I don't come up with anything new. I teach what he teaches, what he taught, what he brought out in the beginning. But yet people forget that. John 14, 21, this is really important because for those people who say, you know, you're not supposed to obey the commandments of God anymore, it's oppressive, it's sin and death, and the law has been nailed to the cross. Yeshua himself says, He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. So what we see here is a direct correlation. There's a cause and effect relationship that if you're constantly continued in sin, you're continuing in sin, and you don't keep the commandments of God, then the opposite of what this verse says will become true. Is that those who keep my commandments, it is he who loves me. So in other words, if we don't keep the commandments of God, then we don't really love him. Our love has grown cold. And, and we even see that in scripture where it says in the last days that the love of many will grow cold. They become lawless. And that if we do that, if we love him by keeping his commandments, by walking in the spirit, by have, being saved by grace and through faith, that we will be loved by the Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. I, I, well, I had so many problems in my life because I was continuing in sin in certain areas, 
And yet I didn't understand why Yeshua wouldn't manifest himself to me. Why I wouldn't, have, why I didn't, have, I always questioned, why don't, why don't I have that deeper relationship with God? Why? Like these other people do. I, I couldn't understand that because, and the problem was, is I was trying to believe the pastor and the, the denominations of men, the traditions of men, their teachings, which said, oh, you don't have to be obedient. The law is a curse. It's, the law has been nailed to the cross. So I was like, okay, cool. So I didn't feel bad about breaking the commandments of God. And that resulted because I did not love God. He was far from me. He didn't manifest himself to me because I was continuing in sin based on that false teaching or taking scriptures out of context. Uh, you know, whatever the pastor or, or you know, uh, priest said, and I ran with it. And it was detrimental because Yeshua says that, that if you keep my commandment, those are the people that love me. And if you love me, you'll be loved of the Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to you. Yet people will say that the commandments of God, you're not supposed to do this. Again, John 15, 10 talks about it. Yeshua says, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. <coughs> Excuse me. But what we end up seeing here is again, it's his Father's commandments. Yeshua preached, repent or perish. When you repent from something, you have to go back to the original. What was it? The Father's commandments, and that you imbibe in his love. And then that spirit, that spirit when it was pour, poured out on all flesh, you know, the fulfillment of Joel, I'll pour out my, my spirit on all flesh, and then Jeremiah writes, uh, my law, <coughs> doesn't say part or some or a little bit or uh, all for the Jews, but none for the Gentile believers. By writing that law in our hearts and having his spirit, we can walk in accordance to the spirit and to keep his commandments and abide in love. And they're the Father's commandments. It's the Father's feast. It's the Father's Sabbath. And when we do that, we abide in his love. But yet people will say, I don't understand. <clears throat> and I've had PMs and messages of people saying, who are against obeying the commandments of God, and yet they're saying, hey, I'm having a problem with drugs. I'm having a problem with uh, sexual immorality. I'm having a problem with porn. I'm having a problem with, uh, you know, alcohol. I don't, God is far from me, and I don't understand why. Look at the pattern of the behavior of your life. Is it based on Scripture? Or is it based on you <clears throat> taking stuff out of context? Yeah, I want to believe in God, but I still want my, my sin. I want that too. I want my cake and I want to eat it too. I want my sin and I want to be able to, yeah, I won't eat the whole thing. I won't, I won't eat all of the sin, but I just want my little piece of sin that makes me feel good. That's going against the commandments of God. So there's other scriptures. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 7, 19, where Paul talks about, it says, circumcision is nothing and uncircumcision is nothing, but keeping the commandments of God is what matters. And what's interesting is <clears throat> you'll see this is kind of like, oh, wait a second, Paul's schizophrenic here. He's not. Because what God deals with is the circumcision of the heart. That is what is most important. And keeping the commandments of God is what matters. Now, does the law justify us? Does the law, uh, keeping the law save us? No. It was weak in that aspect. In that, in that manner, it, it couldn't save us. That's why Yeshua had to come, come to, the, to the world and live and die on the cross. And his sacrifice as the Lamb of God was acceptable. And so that our sins could be forgiven. So now, with that relationship, and now that we can approach God at the throne of grace and present our request to him because we have been forgiven, now we can combine the law that was written on our hearts, the spirit that was poured out on us, and the, for, the, the forgiveness that we've received all come together that allow us to obey the commandments of God. And that's what's mad. that is what matters. Of course, if you're a sinner, the law doesn't save you. It doesn't justify you. But once we're believers, we are called to a walk of obedience. If we were not, the New Testament would only be about a page long. 
We would not see the the Second Timothy 3.16 where it says all scripture is useful for correcting and teaching and rebuking and training in righteousness. Well, what is righteous? Righteous means doing what is right before God. And if God says in his, his word, his law, his instructions for life, do these things and you will be blessed, then you're doing right by God and his word. But yet some people still um, <coughs> don't want to give up their wickedness. <coughs> I've never done that. Still working through that. It's a sanctification process. Romans 2, 14, or, uh, <coughs> excuse me, Romans 2, 12 through 14. Romans 2, 12 through 14. For as many have sinned without law will also perish without law. And as many as have sinned in the law will be judged by the law. So the law is still going to be there. For not the hearers of the law are just in the sight of God, but the doers of the law will be justified. Okay, For when the Gentiles who do not have the law by nature do things in the law, these, although not having the law, are a law to themselves. So basically what we're seeing is that we're still going to be judged according to the law. <clears throat> and once we are believers, this is Paul writing to the Romans, the Gentile believers, saying for us not the hearers of the law uh, that are just in the sight of God, but the doers of the law. So once we become believers and when our sins are forgiven, we're saved by grace, then our walk, our pattern behavior, our fruit, doing God's good works, includes uh, doing the law, hear and do, the Shema. Uh, it's really interesting, you know, hear, O Lord, the, uh, the Shema, hear, O Lord, our God is one, um, hear and do these things. God says, here's the instructions for life, and say, yes, we will do those things. It's kind of like the gospel message, you know, your, your sin, and if you repent and confess, and you do these things, you will be saved. If you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, then you will be saved. It's the same thing. Um, but yeah, it's interesting that those who say that we're not supposed to do the law, um, yeah, look at Romans 12, <coughs> Romans 2, 14, or 12 through 14. <coughs> And it's interesting because Romans 13, 9 says, For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, murder, not steal, bear false witness, you won't covet. If, and if there is any other commandment, they are all summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Notice here that Paul doesn't say that the law has been done away with. But that if you can get to the point of where you can love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, which is covered in Deuteronomy, which Yeshua quoted, and love your neighbor as yourself, that sums up all the laws. It, notice it never abolishes the law. But yet people will say, well, okay, I'll, <clears throat> I won't murder or adultery or steal or bear false witness or covet. But all of a sudden they'll say, well, and then you bring up the fourth commandment, Sabbath. Well, that's a Jewish thing. Well, wait a second. If you were observing the Sabbath, and guess what? You're, that's that's a whole other video. We won't even go there right now. Um, <clears throat> Romans 3.31 says, Do we then make void the law through faith? Certainly not. On the contrary, we establish the law in our lives. So for those people that say that, you know, well, I'm free from the law, and the law has been nailed to the cross. Well, if you're a sinner, yeah, you're in trouble if, if uh, uh, <laughs> you know, if you go to judgment. But the law has been nailed to the cross, it is your sin, your breaking the law, the account of you breaking that law. It's not the law has been done away with. Again, remember, Yeshua said, you know, me and my words will last forever. And not one jot or one tittle of the law will pass until all is fulfilled. All hasn't been fulfilled. But here it says, do we <clears throat> make void the law through faith? In other words, do we say, hey, I'm, I'm now saved and by grace, and so I'm no, under, no longer under the law? We make the law void or, or have a pattern of behavior, a lifestyle that is showing that, you know, hey, I'm still breaking God's law? No. It says we establish the law. Going back to Jeremiah, the law is written on our hearts and our minds. And the reason is so that we would not sin against the law, sin against God. Um, New Testament scripture talks about that the breaking, breaking God's commandments is sin. Transgressing his laws is sin. And so if we break the law, we're in sin. If we're obedient to the law and we walk in obedience, we're free from that sin. 
So it is no longer the law of sin and death, but the sin, of, but the law of righteousness. Uh, Romans 6.14, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. <clears throat> Here's something really interesting, because here it says, well, wait a second. Everything that you just said uh, makes sense, but then all of a sudden you bring up Romans 6.14, For law shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. Uh, here's the thing with Paul, <clears throat> and if you look in Second Peter, I think it's uh, two five or somewhere, somewhere in Second Peter, uh, where it talks about where Peter says, "Hey, Paul is hard to understand, and people who don't have a grasp of the scriptures, it's hard to understand what Paul is saying because he talks about the many facets uh, of God's word and His law and His grace and His love, and so it might seem like there is a contradiction, but in this." For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you're not under law, but under grace. But people will use this as an excuse to not be obedient. But that's not the case. Yeah, sin doesn't have any dominion over us because we are saved by grace. And you're not under the law, but under grace. But again, you have to look at the context in which this is written. But the problem is people will pull this out of context and will twist and manipulate it like it says in Second Peter. Paul is hard and difficult to understand, um, and people who are, who are not wise in the scripture or not mature, uh, they don't understand that. It's kind of like a college level course. If you give that to an elementary school student, they're not going to understand if you throw them a calculus book. Most people won't. So what we're seeing here is that we need to look seriously at, at what Paul says. <coughs> Uh, Galatians 3.12, uh, yet the law is not of faith, but the man who does them shall live by them. So there it is. The law is not of faith. But when we combine the law that is written on our hearts and we combine that faith in Yeshua and we have that grace and we have that spirit of God, when he's in us and we're in him and we're walking in obedience, we're free from the law. That's how you can say, but the man who does, does them shall live by them. Um, the good thing is, is that even though we might sin occasionally, we have that safety net of forgiveness, that grace, that mercy of God that allows us that even though we sin against him and our neighbor, of course, ultimately, everything is sinning against God, uh, even if we just sin against our neighbor, most importantly, if we sin, if I covet my neighbor's wife, I'm sinning against God first and foremost. Then I am sinning against man. That... If I walk in obedience, I can live by those things, and that's what sets us apart from the world of sin. First Timothy 1.8 says, But we know that the law is good if one uses it lawfully. And again, people don't seem to understand that. They'll take that and better than that. They'll take that position that the law is bad. It's been nailed to the cross. It's a law of sin and death. But if I'm walking in obedience to the law, then I don't have to worry about the repercussions or, or the consequences of breaking the law. Too easy. But yet, my problem was I didn't test everything. My problem was is I believed what the, the pastor told me. The pastor, uh, he, he was, it was his fault because he believed what he learned in Bible college. Because he wasn't taught the whole counsel of God in regards to the law, the many facets that are there. Uh, for those who say the commandments, it ends up 1 John 2, verses 3 and 4. Now by this we know that we know him. If we keep his commandments, he who says I know him and does not keep his commandments, he is a liar and the truth is not in him. Uh, we also know that Paul said that the law is holy, righteous, and good. Uh, we also see in scripture where it says that the law is truth. Well, if the law is truth, then... Wow, the truth isn't in him, obviously, if you're being disobedient and operating as if there were no laws given. If you're not keeping the commandments, you're transgressing against God. 1 John chapter 3, verses 22 through 24 says, And whatever we ask, we receive for him. Why? Because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of the Son of Jesus Christ and love one another as he gave us the commandments. Now, he who keeps his commandments abides in him and he in him, 
And by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit whom he has given us. What's interesting is, is that give, he, he, gave us, he gave us the commandment. That is a term that is used in the Old Testament referring to the commandment that God gave man, the instructions that he gave. But it's interesting. Uh, we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. So for those who say that the law has been done away with, well, let's just take stealing. If we claim to be a believer, claim to be a Christian, and yet we continue to steal and transgress that law, thou shalt not steal, is that pleasing in God's sight? No, it is not. Even though, uh, let's say, every Sunday I go to church and, and uh, ask for forgiveness, God, I, you know, I went to Walmart and I stole this out of the store, I stole a pack of gum, and then we ask for forgiveness on Sunday, and then the next week we continue stealing things throughout the week, and yet on Sunday we go back and say, you know, Lord, you know, sorry for that uh, stealing stuff, uh, forgive me. And then you keep on continuing in that sin, that's not pleasing in his sight. But as we keep his commandments, in other words, I don't sin, that is pleasing to his sight. Um, but the biggest thing is that we believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us the commandment. And again, he who keeps his commandments abides in him and he in him. Again, it's interesting that the people, myself included, that uh, I wonder why the relationship with God was so distant. It's because I continued in sin. I operated my life saying the law has been nailed to the cross. I don't have to worry about it. I'm saved by grace. That, that each time I continued in sin, there was further and further separation from God. And it, it wasn't like a wilderness experience. It wasn't like walking in the desert. It was like I was far from God, and I didn't understand why. I didn't understand why I wasn't being blessed. I didn't understand why the relationship wasn't there. Uh, and it's because that distance between me and God, because I was operating my life as if there was no commandments whatsoever. So how can I be pleasing in his sight if I'm breaking all his commandments? Again, this is another confirmation that uh, if he's in us and we're in him, we're keeping his commandments. He said he would manifest himself to us even more. That's another reason why we examine ourselves to see if we're in the faith. Uh, let's move on to 1 John chapter 5, 1 through 4. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone who loves him who, be, who begot also loves him who is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God. Here's a test. When we love God and keep his commandments. So when we love other believers, you know, the, the individual that, that said, you know, well, you can't, you can't keep that don't hate your brother in your heart law, that commandment. You can't do it. No one can do it. Well, wait a second. It says if we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. So there's that relationship there. There is that thing that, yes, we can love and not hate our brothers in our heart if we love God and keep his commandments. Again, there's two things. Love God, keep his commandments. If, if the commandments have been done away with, nailed to the cross, well, I guess we need to rip out everything that John wrote <laughs> out of our Bibles. But verse 3, it continues on. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. So we're saved by grace. We keep the commandments as a new believer, as a new creature in Christ. His commandments are not burdensome. And whatever is born of God overcomes the world. What is in this world? Sin, wickedness, the breaking, the lawlessness, the transgression of God's laws, his instructions, his statutes, his principles, his precepts. And it's not a burden because God has changed our heart. He made us a new creature. We are not justified by the law. We're not saved by the law. But once we become a believer... He renews our heart and our mind, and we're supposed to renew our minds with God's Word. A lot of people don't do that. I've been there, done that, and I didn't understand why I was still having problems with a relationship with God and not in Him being so far from me. God, why are you so far from me as I continue in sin? Um, it's not a burden because He changes your heart and your mind as you continue to renew your mind with His Word, which includes the law, His instructions for life. And then with that, we can overcome the sin of the world. 
A lot of people don't want to acknowledge that because they say, well, the law has been done away with. The commandments of God have been done away with. We continue on, uh, 2 John chapter 1, verses 5 through 7. This is important. Now I plead with you, lady. Obviously, he's responding to this lady who had a problem. Not as though I wrote a new commandment to you, but that which we have heard from the beginning, that we love one another. This is love, that we walk according to his commandments. Now this is New Testament talking to a New Testament believer, giving the advice of walk according to God's commandments. This is the commandment that you have heard from the beginning. You should walk in it. For many deceivers have gone out into the world who do not confess Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Isn't it interesting that Christ, the Messiah, walked in obedience to God's law while he was here on earth. He did all, the whole time. But that those who are deceivers and antichrists operate and they don't follow God's law. They don't follow his commandments. They don't walk according to his commandments. But they come up with these strange teachings that, oh, you don't have to worry about walking in obedience. Don't worry about the porn. Ah, you're okay. That's a deceiver. That's the antichrist, the spirit of the antichrist. That's what the enemy wants you to do. It's to not be obedient. Yeah, it's too hard to give up that porn, so just just uh, ask God forgiveness, and you can continue uh, with your porn addiction, uh, you know, until it comes back. You'll be fine. Just keep asking forgiveness over and over again. <laughs> uh, same thing with alcoholism, or lying, or whatever it is. Uh, been there, done that. That's what the enemy wants you to believe. If it's, oh, if you break one point of the law, it's like you've broken them all. So what's, what's the difference? You know, just ask for forgiveness and, and operate as if there was no law to be obedient to. You're fine because you're forgiven each and every single day for the sin that you participate in. That's the false teaching. That's a deceiver. That's the enemy, the Antichrist, the Antichrist spirit. Don't fall into that trap. Because that keeps you in sin, that keeps you in bondage, that keeps you in that, that death and destruction that comes with breaking God's law. Do you ever wonder why you can't break that addiction of alcoholism, or porn, or whatever drugs? Wow. Yeah, it's too hard to it's too, if I'll break one point. It's like I've broken them all, so it doesn't really matter. It's a good thing I can ask for forgiveness every single day. Then you wonder why, why you're so far from God, why God is so distant. Look at the scriptures we just looked at. This isn't the commandments of God and being obedient isn't this thing of being a, oh, he's a Hebrew roots cult guy or he's, a, he's messianic. or No, this is about the relationship with God. And having that close relationship, this is a God thing. This is a Bible thing. This is you. This is me where the rubber meets the road. This is big boy stuff here. If you're wondering why you don't have a close walk with God, look at your life and are you being obedient to his commandments? And I can guarantee you that if you're far from God or he's far from you, you need to examine yourself to see if you're in the faith and look specifically at what commandments are you breaking over and over and over again. With men, <clears throat> with men some of the biggest problems is uh, porn uh, because we, we have that problem and we want to, to satisfy that flesh. For women, it's romance. For guys, it's the physical act and the feeling. For women, it's the romance and the romance novels and the, the daytime TV soaps. And, oh, he's so, oh, he's so romantic. Didn't you just commit adultery by coveting after somebody and how they're treating their wife, their girlfriend, as for yourself? Ooh, yeah, this is big boy stuff. Big boy, big girl teaching here. And you wonder why God is so far from you? Because you keep engaging in the things of the world. I've been there, done that. 
racking my brain and going to pastor say, I don't understand why I have this, these problems here. Bam, 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 and labeling them off. And the pastor's like, uh, just stop it. Don't do it. You don't understand. And the problem was is that they said the law was nailed to the cross, and I'm free from the law. But they didn't they didn't bring out the whole teaching, the whole the the whole happy meal deal. They didn't bring the reality of God and His Word and the, and the importance of keeping His commandments as a believer, as a new creature in Christ. No pastor said, hey, well, the reason you got this problem is because you're not loving God. And those people that love God keep His commandments. In other words, our mind needs to be renewed. Our heart needs to be renewed. But not one pastor brought that up. They just said, well, just ask forgiveness and try to, uh, you know, try to overcome it. Pray. Ask forgiveness and pray. Seek God. But they totally left out walking in accordance to his commandments. And I tell you, that was the breaking point for me, is that understanding how serious sin is to God and the important, which is also the importance of, of obeying and walking in his commandments, that was the turning point for me. The seriousness of this. And even though this is deadly serious, has eternal consequences, God was able to show me through his word by walking his commandments and saved by grace, faith, the whole nine yards, combining the spirit and the word of the law together is to be that sword of the spirit, to be that sword that divides the joints uh, the thoughts and the intentions of the heart to show me what I needed to die to. And then once I understood that, just as David said, you know, I, I walk according to your commandments. It is a blessing. I hide your word in my heart, your law, your commandments, that I might not sin against thee. And the freedom and the joy, once I understood the liberty that comes from walking according to his commandments and how that is loving God, a whole new world opened up. And then I understood, wow, born, that's nothing. That's, not, that's slavery. That's, that's death. I've got freedom. I've got liberty. I don't have to be bound by that, that sin over and over again, or the alcoholism, or the lying, or the, the, the drugs, and all that stuff. It hit like that. And then, once I, I, and I'm still trying to understand. I'm still growing in this. It, it gets better and better. There's more. I have, I have more freedom now in obeying and walking according to the commandments of God than I ever had before. I mean, obviously, there's the freedom from sin when I was forgiven. That's the greatest and, and foremost uh, liberty and freedom that I've gotten. But as the sanctification of my life goes on, as I'm testing myself, and, and coming against these things, a God coming against these things in my life, the flesh, and dying to those, those things, it's evident that the pattern of behavior of my life is shown by walking in according to his commandments. Yet there are still some people that, that will downplay this. So they, they, they'll ignore this. But yet there's these same people who come against walking according to the commandments. These are the same people that are sending me messages saying, hey, I've got a problem with porn. I've got a problem with drugs. I've got a problem with X. I've got a problem with this and that. And I, I, I don't understand why God's so far from me. Look at God and his word. God made it so that we could read his word and we could understand it. So take the blinders off. Take off the false teaching of, of anybody else and look in what it says as a whole. Test everything. What's really important is that in the end times, as New, as New Testament believers or American Christians or American Christianity or whatever it is, I'm just going to say believers, there's a time coming and the end times are even now. Of course, that was mentioned in the New Testament as well, so we're so much further along in the end times. But the importance of keeping the commandments of God is vital. We're saved. Saved by grace. We have faith. 
Uh, we're a new creature in Christ. We're supposed to walk in obedience. But how much more so if we can point out in the book of Revelation, that should give us pause. That should show us, wow, well, along with all these other scriptures, I haven't even hit all of them. I just, I just did a search on the word commandments, and I just came up with a, a bunch. I didn't even look at them all. It would be a really long video. But in Revelation 12, 17, And the dragon was enraged with the woman, and he went to make war with the rest of her offspring, the woman being Israel, the bride, uh, the offspring, those who are, you know, believers, who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So the dragon, the enemy, is enraged with Israel, and we're grafted into Israel, Romans 11, and he wants to make war with us, those who can meet, keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ or have faith in Jesus Christ. Wow. So isn't it a good thing to be hated by the enemy for being obedient? Revelation says it's, that's the case. Here's another one. Revelation 14, 12. I've mentioned this a number of times in my other videos. Here's the patience of the saints, or some translations it says the endurance of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and have faith in Jesus or Yeshua. So we see it's not either or. It's obey the commandments of God or have faith in Jesus. It's both. It's keeping the commandments of God and have faith together, walking in the Spirit. That is the endurance. That is the patience of the endurance of the saints that during the end times, that is what is going to help them endure to the end. So when people say, oh, we're not supposed to keep the commandments of God, Revelation 14, 12. Here's another one, Revelation 22, 14. This one kind of nails it. Because it says, Blessed are those who do his commandments. And we already saw his commandments are not burdensome. We love God, we keep his commandments. All the scriptures that we talked about. That they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. So as believers today, we're saved by grace. We have faith in God by what Yeshua did on the cross, his sacrifice, the Lamb of God who took away the sins of the world. But as a new creature in Christ, we are called to, Ephesians says that we're to be a holy nation, a royal priesthood belonging to God. Would God why would God reference that being a priest and the commandments of God, the priest followed the commandments of God if we were not to obey the commandments of God today, or even more so during the end times. God didn't give his commandments just to hear himself speak. Blessed are those who do his commandments, hear and do. Once we are justified by faith, once we are saved by grace, then we are to have a pattern of behavior. We are supposed to walk as he walked. And blessed are those who do his commandments. We've seen that. Everything reproduces after its own kind. If you uh, break God's law, you sin, you're not blessed because you've transgressed God's law and there's a punishment and a curse. The curse of the law is there. But blessed, as we see in the Old Testament, Deuteronomy, the blessings for being obedient, Blessed are those who do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. Again, it goes back to that. Even the demons believe and tremble. Well, you can believe all you want, but if it's not backed up by a pattern of behavior of, of obeying the commandments of God in your life and not engaging in the sin of the world over and over again, you're not going to have the right to the tree of life and you're not going to enter into the gates, into the city. We're not supposed to continue in sin. Paul talks about that. Are we supposed to, to make void the law through grace? By no means. We are supposed to establish the law in our lives. Establish, make firm, make it a foundation to cause, to stand, I mean, just make it an immovable, immovable thing in our lives that we don't break the commandments of God and we don't cease from striving to do what is right in God's eyes. And the thing is, is that 
It is not by our own striving. We have to go to God because he's perfect. But through his Holy Spirit and the spirit that guides us into all truth and the law that's written on our hearts and minds, that we are able to walk and run that race to win so that we won't be disqualified from the prize in the end, that right to the tree of life and entering into the city. That's what it's about. Uh, there's, there's a lot of other scriptures, but I think this, is, I think this gets the point of cross, is that if you have this pick-and-choose theology of picking out verse and saying, well, I'm not under the law anymore, but you're still experiencing that distance of God who is far from you and you don't understand why, how about you look at these scriptures? See, the thing is that God's word will never contradict itself if it is taken in context. Of course, the law is not going to save us in the context that while we are sinners, there is the law of sin and death. But once we become believers and believe in him, the Messiah, we repent and confess we're a new creature in Christ, then the commandments help us by keeping us out of sin and being able to live a righteous life. And we strive, we run that race to win. As Paul says, I beat my body to make it my slave so that I could do these things. Why don't we, why, why don't we take the examples of those who obeyed the commandments of God and we'll see that those people were loved of God. We see scripture. It's not saying that you know I'm, I'm, I'm going to obey the law to keep my salvation, even though Yeshua said in... Uh, the Gospels, he said, uh, there will be many in that day who will say, Lord, Lord, didn't we prophesy and cast out demons and do great signs and wonders in your name? And he's going to say, he's going to turn to them and say, depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. I never knew you. How come he would never knew them, know them? Because as we saw in the scriptures that we went over, loving God, keeping his commandments, he will manifest himself to us if we do those things. So once we're a new, uh, new creature in Christ, we obey the commandments of God, he will continue to manifest himself to us, have that strength in that relationship, so that when we stand on Judgment Day, he will say, well done, my good and faithful servant. And he will not say, depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. I never knew you. So we see that cause and effect relationship. If we claim to be in him and yet transgress his laws, he's going to say, depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. You operated your life as if there was no laws to be obeyed. And if you don't obey the law, you're engaging in sin. And again, we stand before the judge for the breaking of the law, not for the good things in our life. You break a law here on earth and you stand before the judge, you can say, uh, let's, say it was, uh, let's say it was speeding. Oh, well, you're guilty of speeding, and uh, you know there's a fine and a punishment. You say, but but judge, hey, I know you're good. Uh, I know, you know, I'm a good person. I go to church. I do all these good things, and uh, you know it is. He's going to say, well, I am a good judge, but because I'm a good judge, I must uphold the law. And you're here for not the good things that you did, but for the transgression, the breaking of the law. The thing is, once we understand how serious God is about sin, when we have that new relationship with God because of what Jesus did on the cross, we will have a new relationship with sin. We will understand how offensive it is to the Father. And the more that we obey the commandments of God as a new believer, walking in the Spirit, living according to the Spirit, having the full manifestation of love and understanding and, and walking and obedience and freedom and liberty that comes with us, the full meal deal, the more he'll manifest himself to us and the less problems that we will have dealing with sin. We'll still go through trials and tribulations, but that isn't that the whole goal is to, to die to self as we go through the sanctification process in our life. Lord knows I'll probably never attain perfection. Paul said, he, he, you know, he goes, I haven't even perfected this. I haven't. So I know I'm not. <laughs> I'm probably on the opposite end of the spectrum. But the thing is, there has to be a starting point of where we start our walk in maturity. 
And I hope this opens up some of those things. So anyway, um, again, it's not an either or. In light of all these other scriptures, if, if people say as a believer you're not supposed to obey the commandments of God, there's a lot of scriptures that show that that is not the case. That we are actually supposed to walk in his commandments. The question is, are you going to be obedient? Are you going to repent and confess? Walk in accordance in the way that God wants you to walk? Or are you going to continue in the way of being far from God, not understanding why I'm having all these problems with X amount of sins and how these addictions or whatever it is, I don't understand. Hmm, what was me? So I'm going to continue breaking God's law. One point of the law, you broke them all, so it's no sense even trying anymore. <laughs> I've been there, done that. But thankfully, God, through His grace, mercy, and love, is showing me these things in His Word. And it produces a more victorious life. Look at how obeying the commandments of God, look at the blessings that come from that. Then do a study on the word lawless, wicked, iniquity. God said in the Old Testament, he said, today I have given you life and death. Choose life or death is what it comes down to. You can either be blessed in your life by walking as Yeshua walked, living according to the, spirits, the Spirit and in walking in His commandments, being obedient, or you can be cursed for being disobedient. It's up to you. So, so I hope you enjoy the teaching. I hope this opens up your mind. I hope this this comes to you at a time when you're receptive to it. There were so many, you know, and I had seen this before, but I, I was ignorant. I didn't want to see it because I was too engaged in sin. I was too worried about oh, my life is so far from God. Um, I, you know, I didn't want to see the truth. And that, you know, if you are in that position where you want to reject this with every fiber of your being, using, using out-of-context scriptures, been there and done that. But I don't hate anybody for, for not following this or not seeing this now because God is working with people at different times in their lives. Why? I don't know. My two cents, I, what, I, what little I think and know is that maybe God is smarter than we are. Maybe he knows what he needs to work on in an individual's life at a certain time, and it's not the same for everybody, because we're all individuals. So if this doesn't click and resonate right now, maybe it's because God's dealing with you on something else, and he'll hit you up later on with this. Or the other alternative is that you don't want to give up your sin. And you don't want to see this. Just something to think about. So anyway, take care. God bless. Shalom.